Hi, I'm Aaron Tweeten. I'm going to show you today how you can create a header section for a website using the WordPress block editor. So right now I have a blank page, or rather a blank post in the WordPress editor. I'm using the default 2020 theme with no additional plugins installed. The first thing we want to do is create a cover block. And the way that you can add a cover block is see this little uh, add block button. So just uh, click click on that. And up here at the top, it's going to show you the most used uh, blocks that you have. But let's just collapse that because I want to show you where it, you'll find it. It's under common blocks and then right here at the top, cover block. So we'll click that. Now we have a cover added. If you want to just have a solid cover, or sorry, solid color, I'm getting those words mixed up. If you want just a solid color, you can select one of the colors here. However, I want to have an, an image, so I'm going to choose one from the media library that I've already uploaded. So I'm going to pick, uh, let's see, let's pick these guys right here. Okay, so the way the cover works is that you got a background image, and then if you look over here on the right, you see the settings. It's showing that there's a paragraph. The way that this sets up is that it automatically adds a paragraph to the middle. What I want to do is select here a cover, go to the cover settings, and now you can see over here the different co cover block settings. I want to show you uh, what each one of them does. Right here under media set settings, there's fixed background. So right now, if I uh, scroll, scroll the page, you know, the image moves with it. If I select fixed background, what will happen is it will give it kind of like this window parallax effect. Not exactly like uh, CSS parallax, but uh, kind of what it does is it fixes the background. Anyway, I'm going to unselect that. Underneath that is the focal point picker, which allows you to uh, specify where you want the uh, position of the photo. So say like uh, her face or her face was like more important. Um, I can move this around and you can adjust them down here if you want. Now, for some reason, if you wanted to uh, clear clear this out and just have uh, color, you could uh, click Clear Media, and then I could uh, you know pick one of the colors if I wanted to. I'm gonna go up here to the Undo button though and go back uh, because I actually want to have something uh, over this. Down here under dimensions, you can set the minimum height in pixels. Uh, setting this may have varying effects on mobile devices uh, because you're setting in pixels, so you'll want to test it out if you actually use this option. So say, like, you know, if I wanted it to be 12,000, 12, sorry, not 12,000, 1,200 pixels, you can kind of see that it's gotten pretty large. Anyway, I'm going to clear that out. And then down here is where you probably spend most of your time. This is where you set the overlay color. So there's five choices um, that are pretty much set by your theme and the way that it's developed. So here uh, I've got a couple of choices here. But you're not limited to these. You can also uh, pick uh, any color you want. You can um, use a palette here to change it. You can put in a hex value, RGB, HSL, can't do CMYK, but um, anyway, you can put in, dial in whatever uh, color you want. I'm just going to go back to this uh, fuchsia color. And then underneath that, you can adjust the background opacity. So say if I wanted it just like slightly opaque, move it over to the side or, or not opaque at all or I could move it to where it's like 90 percent 
and it it moves in increments of 10. Let's see if it can actually adjust it. No, yeah, you're kind of locked in there, increments of 10. So anyway, so that's how a cover block works. Now, before, uh, before we go any further, there's one thing I want to do is because since this is supposed to be a header section, I want it to go, I want it to expand the width of the page. So what I'm going to do is make sure I've got the header uh, selected. I'm going to go up here to uh, ch the change alignment. Click on that and then I'm going to select full width. Now there's a wide width option, but I actually want a full width. I want it to go the entire width of the page so that it would basically be uh, a header. So now that we got the cover block set up, we can now start adding blocks inside the cover block. Creating a paragraph block inside a cover block is pretty easy since it's already there by default. If you click on the block navigation button right here, you can see that there's a paragraph block inside the cover block already. So now I'm going to add some text to this paragraph block. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some placeholder text from laurenipsum.io and just copy and paste it in there. Now after copying and pasting the text, you'll notice some options appear for the paragraph block. So under text settings here, you can adjust the font size. In fact, uh, I accidentally had the drop cap on, but uh, for um, in this case, I, I actually don't want to see something like that. But you could, uh, in fact, let me reset that. This is what it looks like by default, but I can change it to larger or large. I think large will, will do the job. And then under color settings, you can change the background color of this, this paragraph if you want. And notice how it puts in a little bit of a padding around there. We're going to leave these alone for right now. But they can be helpful if you want something besides black or white for the text color. So if I wanted it to be like red. But the problem is, you, you know, you can't really read that. Again, to reset this, I'm going to hit the clear button. To insert the headline... What I'm going to do is have the paragraph block selected and then I'm going to go up here to where it has the uh, vertical ellipses and I'm going to click insert before and what that will do is it will insert a new block before the uh, one that I've got uh, already selected. Now it's inserted a, a new block. Then I'm going to go over here and click the plus icon. But instead of going in here and, and searching for uh, heading, I'm going to actually start typing it in. So as I start to type in HE, I see that uh, heading appears. That's just one more way of finding a, a, a block. And now I can put in a heading. And because I'm lazy, I'm just going to type in the same thing. Lorem Ipsum. Dolor. Or Dolor. I probably pronounced that wrong. Now after you add the heading block, you should notice a few options here on the side just like we've seen before under heading section under heading settings you can select the level from h1 h2 h3 and so forth now in most themes the page or the post title is going to be h1 
So for example, like up here is H1 tag. And then down here, it's presumably going to be H2. And then if I had like a subheading under, under this, it would be an H3. And it's important that you have this ordered correctly. For example, if I wanted this to be like super large, and I went over here and selected H1, what would happen is that you'd have two competing H1 tags. And one way that you can uh, see if this is a problem is that you can go over to the content structure, this little eye icon, and click on that. And what you're gonna see is a little warning if your headings are out of order. So basically you've got, you've got two H1s here. So what you wanna do is uh, select select the next logical order. You, you'll also get an error message like say, oh, I want this to be really small. And so I'm gonna select H5, but go up here, I'm gonna see the same, same error message or not an error message, but just a, a warning message. I'm going to set this to H2, and then if I go back to the content structure, now it looks like everything's fine. Under color settings, you can adjust the text color. However, it's a little different than the paragraph in that you can't select the, the background color. You can only select the text. I'm going to clear that out and just leave it alone. The last thing we need to do is add the call to action button or the button block. To add the button block, what I'm going to do is select the paragraph block and go down to the bottom and then hit the return or enter key. And then I'm going to type using a forward slash. And what that does is it shows a menu of all the blocks that are available. And I could use a button navigation, or, uh, sorry, up and down buttons if I wanted to. Or I could start typing in button and then hit return. And what I'm given is I have a, um, I have the button where I want to put in something like call to action or click me. I'll do call to action. And then down here is where you can put in a URL. And if you had extra pages already in your uh, WordPress site, you would be usually be able to search for those. Let's see, I'm gonna just try something, see if I have any pages. I think I have one, there we go. Yeah, I've got a couple of pages that I've, I've actually built on this test site, but um, I'm just gonna leave this blank for now. Just put in a hash mark. After adding the button block, so you'll see a couple more settings over here. If I expand where it says styles, let me just close the rest of this stuff. You can see one thing at a time. If I look at the styles, I've got two choices. I've got a fill and an outline. Now what determines these are the, what determines the, this is the, the theme that you're using. So for the 2020 theme, it comes with two styles. Other themes may come with more styles than that. Under color settings, you can change the background color if you want. So for example, I'll say, say I want it to be really subtle. Now, once I chose this, you notice this alert shows up saying that the color combination may be hard to read. And so that's a nice little um, accessibility warning. So maybe I'll change that. I can just clear it out. Or if I make the text darker, then that takes care of that problem. Anyway, I'll go back to the default. And let me collapse 
this, and then we have the border settings, and this is basically where you can uh, make make the buttons rounded or not. So after uh, placing the heading, paragraph, and button block to our header section, we now need to center the content. Now for the cover automatically centers uh, the paragraph. As you look up here to where it says align text center, but we have to we have to manually do that for everything else, and it's it's really easy. All you do is just select it, go up here where it says change text alignment, line text center, and go back up, go over here, and this is a little bit different. It change alignment it doesn't say text in there. And then that's it. Okay, now that we're done, let's preview what the page looks like by clicking the preview button. What should happen is a new page should appear. And down here we have the header section. Now, if I didn't like the uh, space right here, I could go back. So I'm going to um, make the minimum height in pixels. I'm going to just put in like 600 and then click preview. And now it's given a little bit more space. Uh, what these folks are, are frustrated about, I'm not exactly certain, but this kind of gives you an idea of how you could have a header, uh, a header section on a website. Well, I hope that this uh, video has been helpful. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me and uh, you can find out more at AaronTweeton.com. Thanks for watching.